Today we're going to talk about innovating from a place of data and how to avoid spending hundreds of hours on the wrong project. We're going to cover the Dunning-Kruger effect, why market spaces are like TVs, where you can get your information from, and how you can test yourself to make sure you're an industry expert. Let's get started. A major problem with engineering-based entrepreneurs is their heavy desire to dive into the technical work. The only time those types of people feel like they're getting anything useful done is when they're actually building something. The problem with that is it's easy to spend hundreds of hours on wishful thinking and hope and end up building something that the market doesn't actually want. A good metric for myself is if I'm giddy to start working on the project, I probably don't know enough about it. The only successful projects I've ever had are the ones where it felt ominous to get started and I was cautiously optimistic that it was possible to get it done. We all suffer from the Dunning-Kruger effect. In essence, the Dunning-Kruger effect states that the less you know about a subject, the more you think you know about it. The curve starts up high. The more that you learn about a subject, you become less and less confident until you reach an inflection point when you know enough about the subject that you feel that there's experts everywhere around you. This is typically the right place to start. As you continue learning more, you will begin to feel more confident on the subject. And eventually when you become an actual expert, whatever that means, you'll have a very high confidence level that will be built from a place of understanding. The next thing I wanna talk about is why marketplaces are like TV screens. When you're sitting back from a TV screen at a normal viewing distance, the picture looks complete, you don't see any gaps in there. But if you put your face extremely close to the TV screen, like when your nose is touching it, you'll be able to easily see the individual pixels. The gaps in between those pixels are analogous to a market space. When you're looking at a market space from far away or with limited information, it doesn't appear that there's any opportunity to be had there. It's only when we learn more about it and we gather information that we find the market holes that can be addressed. So in this analogy, the more information that you have on a subject, the closer you're able to put your face to the TV screen. It's very important that we make sure that we do have that depth of knowledge so we can clearly see the market gaps that are actually there, not the ones that we wish were there. If we don't work with a specific aim, we'll never hit a target that we wanted to. And this is the story of most startups that go bust. They lightly understand a subject or they want something to be true that actually isn't true. There's a famous Mark Twain quote that goes, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for certain that just ain't so. So don't be that person. Make sure that you know what you're talking about and that you understand the market space completely. Where can we go to find information on a market space? Well, the first one is obvious. We research it. We read tutorials, we join online forums, we get on the discords, we look at the buzz, we find who the prominent players are in this space, and we watch videos about them, we follow them on Twitter, we learn the special language that every community has, and we understand where it comes from and its history, the reason why they talk the way they do. After we've learned the basics, we then start to prototype. We download tools, we spend small amounts of money on hardware, and we test things out. Some of the best learning that you can ever get is just by prototyping things. It's one thing to read about a tutorial. It's another thing to actually go through and implement it and watch the inputs and outputs change in front of your eyes. One of the most important ways that we learn is that we eat our own dog food. That means that we actively do the things that we're trying to solve problems for. We solve our own problems. Guy Kawasaki's book, Rules for Revolutionaries, has a great chapter about this. The Porsche factory up in the hills had a terrible road to get out to it. It had potholes, it was uneven, it was narrow, there was broken sections, and the state wanted to fix the road. They wanted to smooth it all out, make it wider, make it much safer to drive on, and Porsche denied their request to fix the road. And his reasoning was that he wanted all of his employees to be driving in terrible conditions every single day so that when they were driving their cars to work, they were experiencing how rough the ride is or how they could make something smoother or how the car feels in difficult situations. And doing this gave them a culture 
of high performance. That's what eating your own dog food is all about. Lastly, how can we test ourselves? So it's one thing to learn all this information in a bubble, but how do you know if you're an industry expert? How do you know if you know enough? Where are you on the Dunning-Kruger effect? Are you still going down the curve and there's a lot more to learn? Or have you already bridged the other gap and you're going back up on the other side? Well, one of the things that I do is I find a competent, open community on this subject. So if we're talking cryptocurrency, I like to get together with other cryptocurrency nerds and have deep conversations with them. And part of this, I go into it trying to learn, that's obvious, but part of it too is I go in there with the expectation that I'm going to speak, I'm going to educate the group. And when I'm talking to the group about these things, I am very careful to make sure that I'm not just trying to convince them what I think is true, I'm actually looking for feedback. Is what I'm saying true? Is it exactly accurate? Is there some nuance about what I'm saying that is not coming across correctly? Sometimes the most important information can be completely invalidated by a small nuance. It may just be a way of thinking about something, thinking about Bitcoin as money versus digital property. The distinction is very, very small, but the impact of that, what that means, how you use it, it completely changes everything. Another thing that you should be out doing is going onto forums and Discord servers and actively be contributing to the community. Help people troubleshoot problems. What better way do you know if you understand this subject if you are actively helping other people bridge the gap and understand? Go through all the tutorials and find problems in them. Report those problems. How well does the community get back to it? How does the community respond? Are they open and excited to fix the problems? That's fantastic. That means that they care more about being correct than they care about if they're right or if something's broken. They care about customer experience. Or are you met with negative energy? Do people troll you? Well, that may not be the type of community that you can use to bring hundreds of thousands of people on board. Maybe you need to find a different tool chain if that's the case. It's extremely important that you go through and monitor what your experience is like as you're getting into these different communities and topics because every new customer that you onboard is gonna to have to go through this same experience. And understanding that experience and how do you alleviate the pain problems is gonna be the difference between a product that people wanna use and another one of your failed stories at a dinner table. So I hope this talk helps you. This is my method that I use when I'm trying to innovate from a place of data. Wish you guys all the best. Thanks.